So we have referenced the command center quite a bit in these weekly community calls. Um, since the beginnings, for 77 days, we've been talking about the command center. What is the command center and why did Quia Delta set it up? So a hospital incident command system is designed to um, put a, a leadership team in place to respond to operational needs that are outside the normal operations. So we basically have to put a new structure in place for leadership and response to the pandemic, as well as having leadership and um, team members still working our regular, mm -hmm. um, through our regular needs. Um, the command center evaluates day in and day out the needs of the hospital, as well as the needs of the community, and works to um, shift operations. So um, while keeping the overall needs of um, all the services in mind. But the command center ultimately looks at what the needs are in response to the crisis. In this, in this instance, it's a pandemic, and then says, we to best meet this new need, we have to shift our operations in this manner, or we have to make this decision, or have to put this measure in place. There's a certain amount of planning that happens if you have time mm -hmm. before, before a crisis comes up, but then there's planning that goes on through the whole entire response. And then from that planning comes operations and logistics of making that plan a reality. Right, so what was your role um, in the command center? So my um, title is operations section chief. So what that role is, is taking the plans that are laid out um, after assessing what needs have come up and then using the team members within the organization to, op to put it into operations. So when we had a need to limit visitors, um, operationalizing that and working with um, our security branch lead to put that in place and make sure that the right information is at the entrances and people are that can come through, can get through and get to their loved ones, people that can't have know how to get connected with the nurse, all those just details of it, we make sure all those details are identified and then problem solved for and a process put in place because it's uh, it's obviously outside of normal processes. And that's just one example. Um, especially in the first six to eight weeks, it was almost daily. There was something that had to be adapted and addressed. And this operations team would just come together and make those things happen. So even things like telehealth that mm -hmm. opened up mm -hmm. in our clinics were areas that the operations team says, People can't come in, or they, it's high risk for them to come in, but they still need to see providers, so we put telehealth in place, mm -hmm. and they could start accessing providers through telehealth. So right. just some examples of what that operations team would do. And every decision, I mean, there, were, there was a lot of planning behind every decision. It's not just a matter of we're closing our doors, no visitors. That, right. was, a, that was a huge process. That really was, yeah. yes. There was a lot to that because not only is it just closing the doors, nobody can come in, but then how do we make sure that people can get in touch with their loved one? How do we get mm -hmm. communication going? How do we train people for when they have to go home? Um, there's right. so many pieces to it that uh, we had to just put into place because it's it's not ever just one simple piece. And right. there's a lot of repercussions to that too. It's That was... I have to say that was probably one of the hardest things that um, we had to put in place was that limiting visitors. Um, it was for the right reasons, uh, and it was to reduce the risk of transmission and infection for our patients, our staff, and our visitors. But that was probably the hardest decision um, right. when we first started out. 